What we're going to look at here is we're going to look at the intersection of three planes in three-dimensional space. Now in this scenario what we're going to do is consider the fact when all three of the planes meet each other. So here we're going to look at the possibilities of the different types of scenario and how we would solve these in order to calculate the required information for our question. Now if we have three planes in 3D space there's only two scenarios where all three of them meet each other. The first one is all three of them intersect at a point. So you can imagine each of these bits here, so this side, this here and this here, all represent a plane in three dimensional space, almost like the plan of a room. So you've got your floor and your two walls. All three of them meet at a point, so the corner in the room. So it's typical of that. So all three of these planes meet together at that one point. There is also the possibility of all three planes intersecting along a line. So let's imagine we've got three bits of paper. What we do is lay one flat and lay the other two bits of paper in some sort of um, diagonal line so they're not parallel to one another and have those meet on the third bit of paper along a line. So we'd have all three planes intersecting along that line of intersection. Now in either of these cases what we need to be able to do is find the solutions which satisfy the scenario and give us our answer. Now in the first one, if they meet at a point, what we'll do is we'll be able to find a unique single solution to our system of equations. If it's a line, there's going to be some equation with a parameter which will give an infinite number of solutions along that line. So we'll be able to find an infinite number of solutions which will represent a line within three-dimensional space. So I'm going to show you each of the two scenarios on their own and discuss how we'd solve it. First one to look at is when all three planes meet at a point in three-dimensional space. Now when we had three, two planes, we were able to find the point of intersection using the two equations to solve for the parameters to determine unique solutions for x, y and z, satisfying both of these equations. Now in order to find out if there's a point of intersection of three planes, we can follow the same sort of logic to find that point of intersection. We need one unique parameter to solve for x, y and z such that we get that point for all three planes. Now to do this what we'll do is we'll use the equations of a plane to set up an augmented matrix which will then solve for our x, y and z values and they'll give us a unique single value for each of them which will represent that point there. So let's imagine I've got three planes given by x minus 2y plus z equals 8, 3x plus y minus z equals 1, and 2x minus 2y plus 3z equals 18. <coughs> what I'm going to do is set up an augmented matrix with these values. Now this is a matrix, we've got three rows and in this case it will be four columns. Now remember the first column represents the coefficients of the x, so I'd have 1, 3, 2. Second column represents the coefficients of y, so negative 2, 1, negative 2. And the third one represents our z's, so I'd have 1, negative 1, 3. And then you could imagine, put a line down there, and then beyond that line I've got 8, 1 and 18, representing the solutions and the constants on this side of the equals. Now what I'm able to do is use elementary row operations on this in order to start to whittle down some of the values so I can find unique solutions of this equation. So if I look at this and treat it like simultaneous equations when we're thinking of row operations, if I look at this and imagine I'm just going to focus on the top two, if I do this second one, so let's call it row two, and I'm going to take away three of the row ones, what's going to happen is this term here is going to disappear and going to become zero. So I'm going to eliminate the x coefficient and the dependence on x for that second plane. I could do a similar operation here by doing my row three, take away two of the row ones, and that will get rid of this. So treat them like simultaneous equations when working with them. So if I was to do that, my top row wouldn't change. I'd have 1, negative 2, 1, and 8. My second row would become row 2, take away 3 of the row 1s. So 3 take away 3 1s is 0. 1 take away 3 of these. So that would be minus minus 6. So that would be 7. I'd then have negative 1, take away 3. That would be minus 4. And then I'd have 1 take away 3 of the 8s. 3 eighths are 24, so 1 minus 24 is negative 23. 
And then I could do the exact same for the bottom one. So taking away 2 of it would give me nothing there. That would be negative 2 minus minus 2. So negative 2 plus 4 would give me 2. And then this one here, 3 minus 2 would give me 1. And 18 minus 2 of these, so that would be 18 minus 16, would give me 2. What I'm then going to do is follow this through and do elementary row operations for every single one of these. If I continue this process, and what I'm looking to do is eliminate all of these values here, such that this is going to be a 0, and then I can work back up the way to eliminate these values here and this one, such that they're all zeros. What that will give me is a matrix along the lines of 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then my values here would end up being 2, negative 1, 4. Now what that means is, again, treat the x, the y, and the z columns. I would have one single x and a 2. So I'd have x is equal to 2 from that one. I'd have one single y and a negative 1. So I'd have y is equal to negative 1. And I'd have z is equal to 4 from there. So I'd have one single solution for each of the x, the y, and the z in there. So what that means is I then get a point, because it's a unique solution, of 2, negative 1, 4. And that represents the point where all three of these planes will meet in three-dimensional space. There will be no line where all three of them meet. It's a single, unique solution. That's our answer for that. The second possibility is that all three of my planes in 3D space intersect along the same line. This is a similar idea as to the intersection of two planes where we've got a line of intersection. Now to solve this, again, we set up the equations in a matrix. And what we do is we prove one of them is redundant. So we get a line of zeros with no solution. Now what this implies is there's no one single unique solution that satisfies all three equations. And what it will do is it will get two equations in terms of three variables, which we can use to parametrically represent our line of intersection, because it will give us an infinite number of solutions depending upon the parameter. So let's imagine I've got these three planes here and I want to find the line of intersection of the three planes. So set them up in their augmented matrix. And I'll have 1, 2, negative 2, negative 7 there. I'll have 1, negative 2, 1 and 6. And I'll have 3, 2, negative 3, and negative 8 there. Now if I do row 2 take away row 1, and if I do row 3 take away 3 of row 1, I'll start to manipulate this. And what I'll end up getting, my top row, row 1, 1, 2, negative 2, negative 7. That won't change. Negative 7. My second row will become 0, negative 4, 3, 13. And my third row will become 0, 2 take away 6 is negative 4. And then I'd have negative 3, let me make that a bit clearer as a 3. I'd have negative 3 take away 3 of the negative 2s. So that would be negative 3 plus 6, so that would give me 3 there. Then I'd have negative 8 take away tw negative 21. So negative 8 plus 21, what that will then give me is 13. If I then look at this, the second row and the third row are the same. So if I was to take this last one and do row 3, take away row 2, what that would do is give me a bottom row of my matrix. So I'd have 1, 2, negative 2, that would be the same, negative 7. I'd have 0, negative 4, negative uh, 3, sorry. 13, and my bottom row will become 0, 0, 0, 0. So what that there does is this bottom row becomes redundant. So I've got no solutions because I've got 0 equals 0. So what I've essentially got now is I've essentially got two equations here from these first two rows, but in terms of three variables, because I've got an x, a y, and a z here, and I've just got a y and a z in this second one here. So what that means is there's going to be an infinite number of solutions. You can't use two equations to solve for three variables. Every variable needs an equation of its own. If I've got three variables, I need three equations to solve it. Because of this, I'm going to have an infinite number of solutions. So what I'm going to do 
is set up a set of parametric equations in order to solve this, similar to what we did before when it comes to setting them up for the equation of a line in 3D space. So what I'm going to do is set z equal to lambda my parameter. What I'm then going to do is take this and substitute it into the second row here, because that second row means negative 4y plus 3z equals 13. If I substitute lambda into there, what I get is I get negative 4y plus 3 lambda equals 13. And then if I move that about a bit, what I'll end up getting is that y equals 3 lambda minus 13 over 4. And then if I look at the first row and do the same sort of thing there, I'd get x plus 2y minus 2z equals negative 7. And if I substitute in this value for y here and this for z, I can write my x in terms of my parametric value lambda. So if I was to substitute all of that in there, what I'd get is I'd get x plus 2 times the y, so 2 times 3 lambda minus 13 over 4 minus 2 lambda equals negative 7. If I were to then take that, manipulate it about, simplify it, get all the lambdas on one side, what I'd end up with is that x is equal to lambda minus 1 over 2. So what that means is that this line in the line with this parametric set of equations for x, y, and z is the line of intersection of our equation, of our three planes, sorry, in three dimensional space. So, what I can then do is take each of these parametric equations, so let me just rewrite them here a little bit clearer. So, I've got x equals lambda minus 1 over 2, y equals 3 lambda minus 13 over 4 and z equals lambda. Every time I choose a parameter lambda, I'm going to get a different value for x, y, and z. I've got an infinite number of lambdas I can choose, which will give me an infinite number of points, which will give me my straight line in three-dimensional space. That there's the parametric representation of a line in 3D space. I could jig it about a little bit, so make lambda the subject of the formula in each of these, and I can put them together paramet eh, symmetrically, sorry, so that I could then write it as 2x plus 1 over 1 from the first equation here equals 4y plus 13 over 3 equals z over 1 and that's going to equal lambda, my parameter. Now normally what we have is just a coefficient of 1 for x, y and z here when we do it so that we can read off our direction vectors. So if I was to do that, if I divide everything in this x1 by 2, I'd get x plus a half over a half. Divide everything in the y by 4, I'd get y plus 13 over 4 divided by 3 quarters. And the z would just remain the same, it was z over 1. So that then equals my lambda there, my parameter. Again, if you miss out the equals lambda, as we said before, that's fine, it's still the same format. But in this format here, though, I could read off the point that is on my line, and I could also read off the direction vector from my line as well. But the bottom line is, I have the equation of the line in 3D space where all three of those planes meet. I've got a solution that satisfies it. For an infinite number of parameters, it represents a line. This is the key to solving it. We either get a unique solution, like we had a minute ago, for the point of intersection, so only one solution to our three systems of equations, or we get one where there's no single unique solution, so we end up with two equations in terms of three variables, so there's an infinite number of solutions, so we set up our parameter z equal to lambda, and then we can solve from there in order to get the equation of a line in 3D space where all three of the planes intersect. It seems like a complicated process. It's not too bad. The most maths it takes, to be honest with you, is this section here when you're manipulating the matrix. But just think of it like a set of simultaneous equations. Yeah, you can rejig it about, manipulate row by row, similar to that, until you get to the 
setup that you want in order to be able to solve the system.